Hello everybody, coming to you from our living room here in Hickorn Hill. Welcome. I wanted to talk to you today about what uh, is going on on the west side of our garden. The other garden tour that we've had before was on the east side of our property and today I'm taking you on the west side where we have a long perennial border. They're much similar to uh, long perennial borders that we normally see in botanical gardens and uh, you will get to know some of the mainstays of the garden including the uh, the retaining wall that we built uh, our feature um, half pergola uh, we have four of them and and you'll get to see uh, those four pergola and where they're situated in the garden as well this is a sketch of the backyard that i did 10 years ago it is now our inspiration and the jumping off point as to what we would like to put and plant in the garden. To the left of the sketch, you can see a line of trees, mostly arborvitae. Uh, just to put that vertical interest, there's a shed that we were thinking of putting on and building one of these days. The retaining wall is very distinct in this sketch, uh, which we were able to follow through. Uh, trees along the fence line um, which are mostly vitex trees. Uh, we plan on putting um, topiary and, and form shape um, Rows of Sharon. Uh, haven't done that yet, but instead of the arborvitae along the backside, we now have our crepe myrtles. You can see the distinct retaining wall, which we were able to follow um, by design. Um, there's the pergola to the left uh, that we were planning on putting as the feature for uh, having a barbecue underneath but that's changed there is a set of steps to the right that's been kept to plan uh, that is there now in the garden uh, and uh, a lot of other perennials and shrubs uh, evergreens that we would like to grow this is the pergola that i was talking about currently we have two pergola on this side of the garden and that's where we will start the tour uh, off of uh, for today's video. In the past videos I've referred to our property back in 2008 as bare earth and this is what it looked like. The property was filled with weeds. There's a berm, a slight hill that goes up which later on turned into our elevated garden but it was all clay, dust, and dirt. In 2011, we decided to put a long fence bordering the back of the property and started building the retaining wall, which fast forward to present day, now is the elevated section of the garden. In keeping with the style of hardscaping that we like, we covered the cinder blocks in stacked stone veneer. And that really gave it a good look. Hello guys, I thought I'd take you this evening on a nice garden tour of the remaining part of the garden here in the backyard. Uh, I just finished using that blue truck, um, hand watering uh, a few of my uh, newly planted um, perennials. But anyway, we are at the front of the first set of steps. That's located to the left if you're facing the backyard this is the left set of steps that are um, anchoring one of two that are that anchor the elevated garden over here we have uh, I think it's on its fifth year now uh, when we had this retaining wall built um, it goes all the way down the back that's the section of the garden that we will go to uh, this evening um, over here was where we did our first garden tour where you saw the um, majority of what we have all the way down to the obelisk over there in the back. Uh, but today, tonight, we're going for a different walk so I'll, I'll take you for it. Over here we have um, two of our antique um, statuary that we got. Um, years ago now up in the northeast um, I did a video recently of these um, uh, lilies they're oriental lilies called salmon star 
uh, very good uh, lilies to have in the garden they like full sun they grow upright um, the bulbs they they require that they are cool so for that um, in the spring I planted some of these lemon coral seed them just to uh, get them cool down uh, but with hot summers they grow really wild and they grow really well um, show you what they look like look at these blooms that apricot orange uh, light green center um, yellow um, on a, a creamy base for the petal uh, really looks good uh, en masse when you plant them I have about 40 individual lily bulbs in this pot and beneath this pergola I have a few uh, speedwell Veronica that are now overgrown and when they are overgrown guess what happens they open up and that center part of the plant uh, looks scraggly like that and uh, I should have staked all of these up but I just left them grow um, wild and here on this a creepy pine that I just planted oh and there's there's that scent uh, because I stepped on it but it's a creeping thyme that I planted in the corner of these steps we like the crunch of gravel so instead of continuing um, uh, the top layer uh, paper uh, paper cover we, we just decided to put uh, gravel in it not only is it um, a little bit um, saving on the on the wallet there but uh, it is nice when when one walks on it one hears the crunch of gravel and I like that um, beside the speedwell the Veronica you'll see a Russian sage and that would be this and it just fills up it fills in uh, the different spots uh, open areas where I have three speed wells planted over here beside the speed well the Veronica is um, one of our favorite perennials a euphorbia and uh, this I did not get to do the Chelsea chop on you know normally I would be cutting this from here and if you go look underneath there's that fresh flush of foliage about ready to pop up um, these are old blooms uh, they bloomed in, in the springtime but I've left it pretty informal uh, for this little garden section uh, left it overgrown this is a David Austin rose that I am trying to overgrow you really have to pardon the lighting that I have right now I'm still trying to learn how to adjust the lighting here on my iPhone but this is called uh, Eden and Eden has oh, wait a minute. she has a very distinct um, baby pink uh, type of flower the blossom is delicate but the scent is very good um, still watering them because they're not, not they haven't even done their first year here in the garden what I'm trying to do this is a climber and what I'm trying to do is allow the canes to really get overgrown so I could have them Roll up and go all the way up here all the way right above and right and crawl on top of the pergola and there's the other pergola right there but this is what I want us to take to all the way down from here all the way down to there and we'll check out some of the plants that I planted here um, starting in the fall of last year and uh, they are bursting at the seams I always say because they are not only overgrown but they're they're thoughtfully overgrowing themselves um, coming up on the step again to the right here's here's a salvia that I like growing in the garden um, this I did not get to do the Chelsea chop on had I done that then this would have filled up here in the middle um, alongside of it is a a volunteer daylily um, if you were following me on Facebook what I did for this area last year was I took all of this out um, and planted several bulbs in this section I had about 80 bulbs from that border to this border and it just grew all the way up um, right underneath the 
um, what do you call this plant? I forgot. Um, I'll get back to you on that in a little bit. I'll flash the name on the screen, but that's also on its fifth year. It was originally planted when um, we did the retaining wall. Um, that's a foxglove right there that's still um, giving me some blooms. I think it's a biennial. Biennial is what they call it. They only bloom once. They seed themselves, and right now I have a lot of seed heads. They will seed themselves. Next year's growth will not have the flowers, but they will flower the second year. So the plan is for me to get foxgloves almost every year so we can do the, the succession of blooms and the succession of foliage uh, on this part and many parts of the garden. There's a lot to um, tell you about this area and I'm sometimes I get a little excited on my videos because this was bare earth. There's not a lot on here but weeds last year and so far I think we've done a good job in planning this area out and um, last fall also let's just stay in this spot and let me talk to you what I can see. Um, that's the knockout rose that I did a video on on uh, Facebook. Um, I'll try to link that down below that way you can you can see what that is. Um, irises. I have loads of iris as we move along as we gather along um, every tour you will see that I have irises that has all these distinct spires gladioli over there there is something about that sword like shape of of the leaves uh, that really add a lot of not only vertical structure but depth and texture uh, to this garden um, down below and we'll go over there but this is one of our favorite that one right there the purple is one of our favorite perennials as well um, verbena um, it's a lollipop kind uh, called verbena bonariensis uh, fancy name but it's a great performer in the garden um, this is a Ooh, now the name escapes me again I think it's a dogwood uh, oh no a viburnum that's a viburnum that has those um, uh, uh, round um, blooms that go with it. Uh, below that, to add texture and for it to kind of spill over, um, is a Helen Bonstein lamb's ear. Look how big that is. Again, I have a thing, we have a thing about things that spill over. From the garden bed and it spills over into the into the gravel and that gravel really looks good in evening light because it's gray it's silvery and uh, it pops up um, in the middle of all these bushes and shrubs textures and whatnot and look i got weeds see weeds all around underneath this gravel is a black um, tarp those weeds grew in between uh, the gravel, not, not into the earth that's underneath the tarp, but sometimes uh, I get erosion. You see that we have some spots of dirt over there, and that's, that's where they're going from. Um, they're easy to take out, and um, on a nice evening like this, that's what I do. I sit uh, in a little bench, and I just start pulling them out. This side is still not done. It is getting there, uh, whereas we have all the woody and herbaceous perennials on the right side of the screen from here to here. We plan on putting woody perennials from here all the way up. As we continue with the tour, I'll take you to the other end of this garden. Uh, there will also be a segment that's filmed on a different day, so you can see how I trim and keep the plants, keep get them tied. Uh, some of them are flopping and I needed to make sure the gladioli, uh, the Shasta daisies, and the other plants in the other side of the garden get their proper care so they don't um, get bogged down by the winds. I'm sitting on my back uh, backyard steps um, under the pergola and behind me is our prized limelight hydrangea. We have several of these dotted around the backyard and um, this is one of two that's over here. Um, got them on sale uh, at Walmart 
believe it or not, for five dollars. A little itty bitty bush that has now grown and matured here in the part of our garden. Uh, I wanted to show you uh, this area. Uh, there, there's a video that I did of a mini tour of this entire area that I will put as a segment of this video. Um, so you'll see it in a couple of minutes. Uh, but I have a few things that I'm doing today. I'm um, working on um, the bed, the garden bed that's behind me. Uh, the gladioli have uh, matured and some of them are drooping and flopping and I need to stake them. I also need to um, prune uh, the Shasta daisy that has really uh, also given us quite a lot of number of blooms but now I need to remove um, the spent blooms on them. So um, I have a few things that I'll be working on. I want to take you for the ride. This is how I tend the garden. This is how I take care of the fruits of the garden. So hopefully you enjoy what we're doing and um, if you haven't subscribed yet, uh, do so. Um, watch our video, and there's a lot of inspiration, a lot of few, uh, a lot of things to learn. Uh, we Here are two of our limelight hydrangeas that are now pushing blooms. Uh, they normally get their blooms around June, July, even into August. They start with lime green uh, early blossoms that turn into white. Uh, that will turn light cream into pink and brown toward the end of the season that's the pergola that's actually pergola number four um, right at the border at the fence of my neighbor this is where we have our spring blossoming perennials irises uh, there's the gladiolus i have lilies in the back and the that hedge that green hedge with the leaves are the gravenstein uh, apples that I espaliate. They're unruly at the moment. Um, not sure whether spring pruning is best, so I'm just going to leave them alone. Here I'm doing uh, replacing uh, the stakes, the bamboo stakes, pruning the gladioli, removing old spent blooms, and uh, I wanted to make sure that that spike of gladioli bloom doesn't get toppled over by the wind. So. Uh, putting long bamboo stakes. These are cheap bamboo stakes that one can get at Home Depot for $3 for about seven stakes. And, and I think that's a good price for them. Tying them together at the stake uh, keeps them upright and it gives that straight um, statuesque um, look to the gladioli. It is kind of windy this day, but toward uh, the end of this bed, I have uh, another limelight hydrangea, which believe it or not, um, I got for free from a grower. Um, I bought limelights from her and she took a liking uh, on me and, and told me to grab a piece, another uh, extra limelight to go with the other ones that I got. Shasta daisies. Another plant that keeps on giving. This plant we uh, initially placed in the garden uh, only about three years ago with two um, small cans and now they have fully grown. Um, they bloom in early summer all throughout the growing season. Each bloom lasts about seven days and every time they wither and, and die then you get all these brown spots coming from the center of the flowers, which really needed to be deadheaded. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm pruning, taking off the dead flowers um, in order for new blooms to push up. Pruning is important because we are removing, uh, not only for aesthetic reasons, but we're saving the energy of the plant so that the energy gets focused on either pushing more blooms or more foliage. In this case, the Shasta daisy, I'm expecting two to three more pushes of blooms and this will fill in all the green gaps that you will see once I finish uh, with this uh, garden task. And there you have it, all neatened up, all ready for the next few weeks for more blooms to show. I do hope that you liked this video today. It is a little longer than uh, the usual videos we post, but there's 
a lot to show, a lot of blooms, a lot of good plants that are growing. Whereas late winter, early spring is all about planting for me. Summer uh, is all about tending the garden and, and this is the also the more relaxing part of owning a garden such as Acorn Hill. I know many fellow gardeners out there can agree and identify with what I just described. I hope you enjoyed this tour. If you are new to the channel, do subscribe. If uh, you like the videos that you're seeing, um, press that like button. And if you have any questions, any suggestions uh, regarding growing and, and regarding gardening, I'd love to hear from you. Um, put all your questions on the comment section. This is Louie for now. Welcome back to Acorn Hill.